let me fill you in on a little secret. The distance of your favorite marathon courses aren't measured directly through the center of the track. Instead, they are measured based on the shortest possible distance, also known as running the tangents. And this is also why your GPS is recording more when you cross the finish line. But if you wanna cross the finish line covering the precise distance and subsequently shaving minutes off your finish time, you need to master the skill of running the tangents. And that's exactly what you will learn by the end of this video. In fact, this is just one of five tactics you can use during your next race to give you better marathon times without using more energy. So let's dive in. Okay, here are the steps if you wanna run better tangents. Step one, image search running the tangents and familiarize yourself with different curves and corners along with the best running lines. Step two, study your next marathon course and visualize the shortest path you need to take. Step three is to practice running these tangents in training. And if it's a local marathon, you can even practice running sections of the race weeks prior to race day. Step four is on race day, look ahead. There may be barricades and fences that you weren't expecting during your training runs. But looking into the distance will not only help your posture, but will also allow you to calculate the best race line. As a bonus tip, when signing up for your marathon, choose the appropriate starting pen based on your ability and expected finish time. If you get this wrong and you start with a crowd of runners slower than you, you'll be spending a lot of time weaving your way through the pack and adding on minutes to your finish time. The second way you can run faster without using more energy is by utilizing the features on the road. Let me explain. I first used this trick when running the Wings for Life race with my sister and twin brother. This was a one-way course consisting of long, straight sections, so this course wasn't great for running good tangents. However, what we did was utilize the road reflectors by stepping on them just at the right angle, which assisted with our propulsion. Now, I must admit, road reflectors are really small and probably won't work for those of you run smarter scholars that are heel strikers. However, next time you're on a training run, try catching the downslopes of objects such as speed humps and sidewalk slopes and see if you get these same speed effects. Then try to identify these opportunities on race day. Just remember, the idea here isn't to increase your speed as you run through these tangents and utilize these features. That would be using more energy. Instead, continue at your natural speed and let these methods give you a natural boost. Also make sure you don't deviate too much from the tangent line in search of these road features. Before we get into our third speed hack, I need to introduce you to a term called running economy. This is a fancy term representing how effective you are at utilizing oxygen at a given speed. An easier way to think about it is by visualizing two runners both running at an identical speed. The one with the better running economy will be running at a lower effort level. If, however, I asked both runners to run at the same effort level, the runner with the better running economy will start running faster. So what if I told you there was something you can instantly do without using more energy that enhances your running economy. Well, there is such a thing, and it is smiling. In fact, we even have research showing those who were told to smile during a treadmill test improved their running economy somewhere between two and 8%. And the authors reported this effect as real and worthwhile. In fact, if we look at these studies, the benefits you get from smiling is better than a six week plyometric program and a 13 week strength training plan. It's no wonder Kipchoge adopted this secret during the Breaking 2 campaign. It's a loop and uh, he's smiling again. People can smile for different reasons, mostly because they're happy. We've said that Elliot often smiles when it's really hurting. So here are my tips. Because this will work even if you just have a forced smile, I prefer the genuine thing. So during your next marathon, make a conscious effort to read all the funny banners, high five the spectators and thank the volunteers for their time. If you pass someone, give them encouragement. If someone passes you, cheer them on. After this deliberate practice, you'll be feeling good about yourself, naturally smiling and reaping the rewards. Now we can't talk about our fourth speed hack without a quick recap on how your body uses fuel during the marathon. For the most part, your body will primarily rely on carbs for fuel. 
which are digested and circulated through the body in the form of glucose. And while the body does an excellent job at directing the glucose to the working muscles, your legs are competing with another important organ that exclusively uses glucose to operate. That organ is the brain. In fact, even at rest, your brain uses approximately 20 to 25% of the glucose stores. And the more you think, the more brain power required, and the more you're redirecting important fuel away from your pumping legs. Imagine that you're driving down the coast, desperately trying to preserve your fuel tank, but your air conditioner is turned on all the way and you can't turn it off. That's what's happening when your brain is overthinking during a marathon. So the next thing you can do to run faster without using more energy is to reduce your cognitive load. Remove as many checks and balances as possible on race day and give your brain as much downtime as possible. This is just another reason why rehearsing the course layout before race day can be so beneficial. In fact, a lot of brain power is used on race day when constantly monitoring and calculating your splits to see if you are on track to meet your finish time. So a good tip is to follow a race pacer, which will take all of the calculation and guesswork out of your splits. This results in less glucose to the brain and a fuller petrol tank for those hardworking pistons. Now I've saved the most important speed secret for last. And if you can do this right, you can expect an extra 3% improvement in your running economy. And the secret is by selecting the right shoe for race day. Lean in here. What if I told you that there are only a few select shoe companies that use a special type of foam called p -backs? This is important because if your shoe has this special foam, it will be 20% lighter and return 30% more energy compared to the next best foam on the market. Luckily, I've done all the heavy lifting with the most up-to-date research and ranked the top seven super shoes from the worst performers to the best. And you can check out the research findings in this video right here.